Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's very, very special live stream. I am so thrilled to be here. We are good to go. And my goodness, do we have a treat today. We have someone with us who has been so graciously wonderful and generous with her time that she has graced us with her presence. We all love her. I am a huge fan. I am, in fact, trying not to fangirl. We have here today with us a girl so wonderful, she in inspired me to develop my YouTube channel. A girl so beautiful, she's inspired me to actually dress properly for a live stream. A note, I'm not in my pajamas and I have makeup on. This is unusual for me. She is the one, the only, the great Sydney Watson. Sydney Watson, thank you so much for joining me today, my love. How are you? I'm good. I'm uh, I'm sorry to your audience for being the reason that we were late. Uh, it's this is on me. No attacking Daisy. This is a Sydney problem. That's, girl, I don't know what you're talking about. You've always looked so beautiful, and you you were the one that every time I would see you, I'd be like, this. She's she looks like a, a pretty princess lady. Oh, While you're so I'm like sweet. scrounging around on the ground in my like you know five dollar jeans from Savers. It's it's great. It's a good time. It's a, no, you, you're a sweetheart. Thank you for saying that. No, honest to God, um, I have this thing whenever I live stream by myself, which I do quite a bit, um, mm -hmm. I used to live stream in makeup, but then I realized I was always doing them at like seven in the morning to cater for everyone's time zones. And I'm like, why the hell am I getting up at five in the morning to put on makeup to stream at like 7 a.m. when ordinarily I would be in my pajamas drinking yeah. coffee with unbrushed hair? So I switched all my live streaming by myself to literally be like me makeup free having just rolled out of my bed so yeah honestly you, you... i don't blame you because sometimes like like i put in effort today because normally i i would just put on eyeliner and maybe some mascara <laughs> but i was like no i'll do my actual eyes and it takes it takes a long time men do not understand the struggle they don't get this so no, well, some of them this. do, I guess, these days. <laughs> well, nowadays, yes, I was going to yeah. say, but no, most in the in the conservative sphere uh, don't don't probably no. <laughs> get, get what it's like. But it no. is so nice to have you here today. Now, look, um, you and I, um, we actually go quite a way back, which I think um, you know a lot of people probably don't realize. You know, we're both Australian. You're you're Australian American, but remember, we were coming up around the same time in sort of 2017 2018 we started kind of doing the political commentary thing mm -hmm. and one of the things you did really early on which i just thought was so cool i was such a fan of this at the time was that in 2018 you held something called the march for men mm. in melbourne um which was wonderfully fated and also wonderfully controversial at the time in the mainstream media so uh -huh. Tell us a bit about that. Let's let's relive. Do tell. Oh, you, God, if we're going to go back this far, we're going to need popcorn <laughs> or something. Um, uh, yeah, I, I guess like I can't even remember the specific incidents now that triggered that. But I remember it was a, a young girl, I suppose, had been um, murdered, hadn't she? And then the, the Australian media went insane with that. And so mm. rather than addressing the fact that, you know, this horrible individual had taken a woman's life, they decided to make it an entire male issue. And I know mm. that we line up quite a lot on this. I heard all that and I was like, that is lunacy. Like you can't just blame an entire sex for the actions of, you know, a few individuals. That's, that's crazy. So from this, I suppose I was hearing all of this horrible, horrible commentary. And I thought, yeah, someone has to do something about this. And so Looking back, I'm really glad to have been able to do the protest and to have that demonstration. And, I, and you know what, Daisy, everybody was so incredibly kind who came um, and they were all sort of there with the express purpose of showing solidarity with men. And also, I suppose, you know, a lot of the women who were there, too, were like, yeah, we love equality and we love the fact that women and men complement each other. So it was an interesting time. I remember Antifa were setting off their little <laughs> horn thingies and being dirty unwashed people <laughs> but yeah it was Ugh. it was it was a good time um and like i said everybody was very kind and yeah the media hated me so that was fun super fun super oh, fun very reminiscent <laughs> well look it, it's good when you've got the the right people hating you and certainly all the right people were hating you. i think buzzfeed was on your tail for a time and you know if you've got BuzzFeed after, I've had BuzzFeed after me before, it's hilarious, but you know when you've got BuzzFeed 
BuzzFeed on you. It's it's all good. No, I remember at the time. I think it was a Eurydice, Eurydice Dixon in yes, Melbourne. You yes. know, had been. And look, we all, it was a it was a terrible thing that happened. She was you know raped and killed in a park. Horrible. Um, which was, it was awful. Um, yeah. And it was interesting though. I thought that the feminist commentary at the time was so opportunistic it was. and so cruel because they exploited this poor girl's death to kind of feed their own cause I think didn't they yeah I would yeah I would agree with that and I think that's what was so distressing is that you know I would say that the vast majority of men are exceedingly good people and it's funny because in recent months I've sort of seen the other side of the equation and this is why you know a lot of my views I think have softened in some capacity towards some feminist narratives some only some just want to <laughs> specify that um <laughs> And but it but it is interesting looking back because at the time and now that obviously I live in a totally different country where the uh, the social emphasis is totally different. But Australia is exceedingly gynocentric, and it is. I think that's just a fact. I mean, now I live in America where that's believe it or not less of a thing. I don't find that a lot of those same angry feminist narratives are as commonplace as back home. But they were opportunistic in the way that they were handling this. And I feel like they often are. There was a death of another young lady in um, the UK. Again, I can't remember the specifics of the case. Um, and I'm sure that you saw this too, Daisy. But there was, mm. uh, there was a lot of commentary coming out of their parliament where people were suggesting having, you know, curfews for men. And, and I realized that those curfews <laughs> were supposed to be symbolic. They knew that they couldn't actually enforce that on men. But they were like, yeah, maybe we should do this and see how much crime rates drop. And it's like... Ah! It, just, <laughs> ah! it just drives me insane um it just drives me insane even now even now yeah. I'm just mind blown by these people no it is mind blowing because it's, it's mind blowingly ignorant really because anyone who knows anything about these kinds of issues will know that women are in much more danger from from men that they know yeah. than they are from random Strangers. attacks on the street. I, I mean, straight up, men are much more likely to get attacked in public than than women are. They're, they're yeah. the primary victims of violence in society. And as the saying goes, women are actually in more danger in their kitchens than they are walking around on the street. So there's this, you know, misinformation campaign, I think, that's been pushed by mm -hmm. feminists um, to you know, have this this weird sort of cause thing. But I, yeah, I remember back then that was kind of the the height of the male privilege era of feminism, yeah. wasn't it? I remember that that phrase was being thrown around a lot. And so what I find so funny is that in recent years, those same feminists have caved to what I think is the ultimate form of male privilege, mm -hmm. which is allowing or actually insisting that biological males who identify as female should be able to share the spaces of women like bathrooms and mm -hmm. prisons and and sports i mean that's the most extraordinary irony isn't it yeah i mean it's kind of funny how the feminists who were fighting the patriarchy became the patriarchy <laughs> this is this is something that will continue it tickles me in a way because i'm i'm just like wow you guys have been cannibalized so much by the trans movement and i guess liberalism that they've ended up as this sort of weird amalgamation of just nonsense i mean not that not to say that they weren't in some ways but they did mm -hmm. have some points that like i said now i look at and i go yeah i get it <laughs> but uh, you know that that's come from some experiences that i've had but yeah realistically watching the downfall of feminism so rapidly now is kind of startling because when you think about it it's sort of as if intersectionality came and then they entirely focused all their attention on biological men who identify as women because i always say this like go okay i encourage everybody watching this right now and daisy if you can you know after after we finish live streaming or whatever go yeah. to feminist the feminist page <laughs> on uh, on instagram and you tell me what you see because i can promise you now that the majority of the posts are about trans women and same with there's pink news it's all about trans women and they it's just it's so bizarre because i mm. think female issues are so specific because we have so many specific characteristics and traits that biological men simply do not understand and they never will and that's okay but to try to act as if we're somehow you know the exact same and that our issues are the same is lunacy it's lunacy i don't mm. know what else to say it's lunacy no, it is lunacy and it is this um, 
this massive inconsistency in modern yeah. feminism and it makes me sort of think that really none of them actually know what they're talking about and it's all just you know <laughs> no. virtue signaling <laughs> you know you know so to, so to speak because like the line that goes through much of modern feminism is that all the differences between men and women are supposedly socialized there's no yes. there's no biological determinants in fact there are there are no traits that are inherently you know man or, or womanly it's all just so to, totally socialized and we're all born blank slates mm -hmm. but at the same time with this trans activism which is that oh if you're a man you can identify as a woman and vice versa well they're saying that you can be exposed to a lifetime of being socialized one way but still end up the other that's a total contradiction in terms isn't it oh, <laughs> lady I, I feel like the more that I have to do with this issue the more that I just want to rip all my hair out <laughs> it's the same sort of thing. It's the same sort of thing. I don't know if you saw, and I know I was uh, messaging you about this before we went live, and I was like, I'm really on one about um, this Eli uh, Ehrlich yeah. stuff, where yeah. Eli said today that, I can't remember the exact wording, but it's something to the effect of, like, the only difference between trans women and biological women is that biological, oh no, but the trans women were assigned male at birth. Oh my god. S S Sir, Sir <laughs> ma'am, um... <laughs> Um, I, I listen, I don't want to be graphic or crude or uh, yucky about this, but I think it may have to do with, um, you know, the, the dingleberries and <laughs> the man pickle that typically is hanging out downstairs. Like I, I, like, I feel like they live in an alternate reality where everything mm. is just like, you know, malleable and squishy and they just go mm, today. I feel as though I'll be this, I don't know. Yeah. No, it's it, it's bizarre, and that that whole thing about oh there are yeah you because know, I saw you tweeted that and I felt maybe want to like smack my head through the window honestly <laughs> it's, it's just like it drives me insane because they I, I don't know how um, erasing biological sex from the trans experience is any way pro trans because I, I would have thought mm -hmm. that um, the difference between trans women and women should be sort of recognized and celebrated in that ideology because. Biological sex, I would have thought, is a big part of the trans experience. It's that gender dysphoria and, and that discomfort with it that is a big part of their thing. So yes. why this insistence that we're all the same? I suppose, you know, I actually, I, I've thought about this a little bit. And I think it's because if you're going to try to carve out a space for your movement or for individuals who are just like you, like you just said, one would think that that would mean that you would be inclined to address or at least look at realistically the differences between you and the group that you want to be with so that mm. you can better integrate yourself by acknowledging those differences. Because realistically, I'm not sure about you, I have, I have a couple trans friends who are very yeah, aware too. of the fact that they are men biological yeah. men they are aware of that but they obviously live their life as women and as far as i'm concerned i'm like well you know you're adults you do what you want to do and you know i'm happy to respect that but mm -hmm. they not for a second do they act like th we're the same not for a second yeah. and i really respect that about them because i think well that takes a lot of courage too because in a way that existence has to be very tough right that has to be so jarring to know that you are biologically one thing that your body is destined and forever be that one thing but you're desperate to be the opposite that has to mm. be a, a very uncomfortable experience and i really empathize or sympathize with them on that so uh, you know, it's it's an interesting thing because when I do think about why would you insist that you're exactly the same as biological women? And I honestly think it comes from the fact that they are so desperate to be exactly us mm. that they will deny exactly what is happening to them, the reality of their existence. And that is like, oh, yeah, <gasps> that's, that's big. Mm. It's big. And, and I, I agree with you. I mean, gender dysphoria must be, I think, one of the worst things a yeah. person can live with. I, I, I mean, can only imagine. That, can you like you just imagine that discomfort just feeling completely wrong in your body like all day every day which is why you know transitioning uh, as a as a form of therapy is the right choice for some adults you, yeah. you know what i mean to, to socially and sometimes medically transition like your trans friends my trans friends it works for them and i'm you know perfectly happy to respect that because that's how they're able to live their you know happy fulfilling lives but they don't insist that they're women, you know, they, they know right. that there that there's there's women and then there's trans women. And I don't understand why that 
difference makes one somehow better than the other. It's, you know what I mean? It's like the activists have duped them into thinking that trans women are somehow lesser than women, but that that's, that's just not true, is it? Well, I guess it's more for me when I look at the issue, I kind of think it's really sad that young people who are confused or uncomfortable or, you know, physically just don't kind of really know where they're at and they might be struggling and they might be suffering from, you know, a myriad of other mental illnesses that they can't quite make sense of the world from. Um, it's sad to me that they're kind of sold this false idea that if they transition, that they will become the gender that they want to be. I just think mm. that that's just, it's just so wrong to do that to somebody because I mean, ultimately, I, and I, I've made this point uh, quite a lot, you're basically medicalizing yourself for the rest of your days. And yeah. that is such a huge thing to, to think that you, that in order to exist as you want to, you have to inject yourself with hormones. You have to, you know, I know that there's creams and, and pills and things people can take as well. But to think that you will have to do that until the end of your days is is crazy. And then the other thing too, I think that's sad is that nobody ever talks about the uh, the negative consequences of this. Buck Angel, who um, I think mm. lived for thirty years as a female and then transitioned yeah. to male, or maybe maybe Buck transitioned earlier than that. I'm not sure. But Buck talks about this a lot because um, you know there are issues that you get with your with your cervix, with your uterus. There are tons yeah. of these issues that no one ever hears about, and they can kill you. Yeah, yeah, ex exactly. And because the ideology is so pervasive, and I don't understand why the ideology is so pervasive. Like why they are maybe uh, maybe it's because they know that sort of the crux of it is very flimsy so you know yeah. because they have to just keep driving it and and no dissent is tolerated you know because they know that actually it's sort of very very much on on thin ice there but like you know p particularly as you say with young people who feel insecure um the social contagion theory of it i i, I think is real like you know yeah. some, some some kids like if we're talking children and teens they do have gender dysphoria it's a very small minority but they do have it and whatever their doctors say they should do is i guess what's best for them hopefully but the social contagious contagion thing can't be dismissed can it but when you consider popular culture nowadays it's so geared towards that sort of gender neutral androgyny thing yeah oh 100 percent. I, I think back i mean we all make this all of us do this what we talk about when we were 10 and we used yeah. to wear <laughs> our siblings clothing and we would run yeah. around the house you know and and i some of my male friends are so funny they've admitted like yeah i used to i'd put on my mom's high heels or like yeah i tried oh. putting on lipstick <laughs> and they're like you know these masculine like type of dudes um yeah. and it makes me laugh because i think to myself well uh your pp would be s snipped by now sir mm. That yeah. would be a tough time. But yeah, no, the social contagion thing is insane because uh, uh, <laughs> I, I'm sure that you look at the TikTok, the old talk. Oh, and God, yes. <laughs> whenever Ooh, you yes. get, oh, it's so bad. You know what I'm noticing? I don't know if you've noticed this too, but on um, YouTube now with these shorts that they're forcing us to make, um, I'm noticing <laughs> that the, the landscape of them is exactly the same as TikTok because these little buttholes are just repurposing their imbecile content from TikTok onto YouTube. <laughs> and, you know, I've always thought, yeah, YouTube is left to see, sure. For, yeah, it's, it's got its, listen, it's got its down, not good things. It's got its downfalls, oh, yeah. but it's at least not this icky, I don't even know how to describe it. It's not this like dirty platform that just is, you know, imbeciles in their 15 seconds of fame. Uh, and now they're turning it into that. I'm like, no, please stop. Don't do this. Maybe I'm I old. Know. Daisy, no, no, no. <laughs> I agree. I agree with you. No, you're not. You're not old. Trust me. You're you're young. You're younger than me. So, <laughs> so don't worry. You're not getting old. But no, um, yeah, it's it's weird with sort of YouTube and their shorts. It's like they're trying because TikTok has become so Massive. massively mm -hmm. downloaded. They're trying to kind of compete with TikTok. And like, I should be making shorts. I've been I've been seeing your shorts. I like your shorts. But thank you. I I, sh I should make them. But like, I, I I feel like I'm too old for Instagram, let alone making. And no. <laughs> making uh, shorts on youtube but look um you... they're fun though and like it's, they, they make you enthusiastic because uh, like so when i the part of the reason i was late because i was editing one just now so um <laughs> i wanted to like post it in the middle of this just because like i want to get it out but i won't do that to you um no that's okay <laughs> no just because i'm like i'm like ah! about timing the things and um, because my audience is always like sydney why are you so crap at doing things when you Aww. say you will no it's true they're right they're 100 percent right i need to be bullied um but it's it's funny because you get excited about them because 
being so succinct in a minute, I and I say this knowing I hated them when I, you know, when I ne knew I needed to make them, I was like, I don't want to do this. But mm. now I'm like, okay, this is actually cool because in between making content, I can post a couple shorts, cover some main issues that are happening in the day and, and people seem to really like them. And that makes me really happy because I really do put a lot of effort into everything I produce. You should do it, take mm -hmm. advantage because um, I don't know if you've experienced this. I think you have. Uh, our channels grind to a halt because YouTube oh, yeah. goes, no, no, no. And for some reason, everybody is interested in watching the shorts. It sucks. Mm. I don't know why. But it's, I suppose it's a good thing. No, that is a good thing. And, and you've actually inspired me to make them because um, I actually, yeah, I, I, if they're fun, I'll do it. I've had um, some they of my subscribers fun. say I should do it. Yeah, I think I will because I did hear that um, they YouTube privileges the shorts over the long videos. It does. This, just to make everyone's attention span mm -hmm. just just that little bit shorter than, than mm -hmm. it's already become thanks to the modern world. Even just like looking at, <laughs> if you guys want some insights into Blair. No, honestly, just like looking at them, um, even the I've only posted three and they've all got like a hundred, one's got 160, one's got 133,000 views. Like, oh, wow. And it's weird because again, they're one minute long and some people get like a million views on them and you just go, what is this? How is this happening? But it's because yeah. YouTube is forcing people to watch them. It is carving <sighs> out a space and it's going, you will do this. This is how we are platforming now. This is what's going on. Makes me sad in a way because long form yeah. content I think is king. And yeah, I agree. That's what educates people. That's what helps people, you know, find joy in their day or whatever. But you know, they want to compete with TikTok, and I suppose this is the only time I would say ride the wave. If it's going to happen, <laughs> if you have to do it, ride the bloody wave. All right, I will. I will indeed ride the ride the bloody wave. You have inspired me. Um, <laughs> everyone, all my subscribers now, you all have to hold me to account. I have to make YouTube shorts. I have promised Sydney Watson that I'm going to make them, and therefore I must make them, and I will do it. <laughs> I yeah, well, there you go. You, and you said this now publicly, so um, publicly. that means that you're stuck. You have to do it. I do. Really, it's on, they're, it's just, they're, it's they're on the public record. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just buy, like, I bought myself one of these little, one of these little stands. Oh, cute. And so oh my I just God. put my little phone in it and I go for, you know, a minute and then edit it and then, and then we're good to go. Well, what was, what was that you do? You do Sydney, you get the stand and you, what was that face you pulled? You went like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little chaotic tonight. I apologize. Uh, you know, when you get to the end of the day and you're really hyped up from just doing life and uh, and then you jump on a stream and you just become this, you know, sort of creature. That's what's happening to me. I know. I love it. I love it for you. I love the energy. I love everything you're doing. <laughs> I'm glad. I, I do. Now, look, um, you mentioned Eli Ehrlich. Yes. A little earlier in the stream. I've been sort of catching up on that issue. Mm -hmm. um he's a trans she sorry goes by the she is it trans by she. goes by the she <laughs> yeah. he's a trans activist who has sort of allegedly created like an international uh drug trafficking initiative it, it, it seemed of of hormonal cross hormone drugs are you trying to find a way of saying this without like using yeah. keywords like what is going on <laughs> yes uh, i i'm trying to kind of get my can you explain it, it, it to us what's going on because I, I just find it so extraordinary so this is honestly one of the f I, i'm gonna say funny it is funny because there's like mm. this whole war going on between a couple factions on the internet what eli is doing is obviously not okay um yeah. but it's the oh god it's the net effect from all of this that's been very humorous to watch um <laughs> so long and short of it is that um eli uh is identifies as a she um and there's actually some really jacked up history that goes along with eli apparently this individual has um done some things to people that they haven't consented to and that one of those people took their own life because of the oh. stress and anxiety surrounding all of that um it's actually quite horrible and i think this person is a quite horrible person uh but then what this individual started doing was basically publicly saying well as long as um places in the united states will not ship and will not uh, let young people access cross-sex hormones I'm going to start shipping that to people. I'm going to start encouraging other people to, you know, disperse these drugs to young people. And we're, we're not talking about, you know, like 18 plus. I, I believe we're talking about minors. That's my understanding. Wow. I, I, people can correct me on that one. 
So then what happened was um, Libs of TikTok and some other, I, I believe actually uh, Matt Walsh got onto this and these two were like, yeah, this is not good and started exposing it and talking about it and digging into the history of it all. And now it started this all out war between all of them and they just keep tweeting at each other. Wow. <laughs> I love a good, a good flame war uh, on Twitter, yeah. you know. It, it, particularly mm -hmm. when you get really entertaining people like Matt Walsh, because I, I, I love Matt Walsh. I, I don't agree with everything he says, but I find yeah. him so funny. He's he's so amusing. Um, he's just oh. a bitch. He just says bitchy <laughs> stuff. He's like, like I think I'm pretty bitchy on Twitter, but he <laughs> is next level. But yeah, he's he, dude, he's good on as far as, you know, these like short, sharp, snappy things. But I'm the same way. I don't agree with everything that he says. And I had him muted for a period of time there. because I was like, oh, wow. Oh, shush. <laughs> um, but yeah he's 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 very valuable honestly uh i think with this issue isn't it sad though daisy Do, i don't i don't know again i don't know what you think about this and i'd be interested to know do you think it's kind of sad that it took a man making a video about what is a woman for people to like for for the whole that whole issue to kind of explode because i feel hmm. like we should have done that like women should have been on top of that because we're the ones whose existence is being erased and yet we couldn't push the boundaries i don't know that just makes me sad to think about yeah it's interesting yeah, that is a really um <clears throat> a really interesting point because his his documentary like it was phenomenal it was yeah absolutely phenomenal it was really but good. it is yeah it was so it was so thorough and entertaining like really mm -hmm. funny but also really funny. He was fun, but really moving as well. Like that interview he did with Scott Nugent, like that made me cry. Yeah. That was yeah. like, oh my God, got me right in the field. It was so interesting. But yeah, it is, it is a shame, isn't it? That it took a, a man, a man to do it. Like yeah. it, it, it literally took a man to do it. And I'm wondering, is it to do with Matt, his personality, or is it to do with something that, that, that men are a bit, well, they are more aggressive than women. They're a bit more mm -hmm. kind of single-minded, you know, if you look at the way that male and female brains work, that, you know, a man would be, I guess, aggressive enough to do it. I, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know. Or is it maybe like, there've been women who've been talking about this for a while. They have, like, as we know, like you and me, I'm JK Rowling, you know, Julie Bindle, a lot of them. Yeah. Um, but they get kind of like deplatformed so fast and so hard by the trans activists in a way that Matt Walsh sort of didn't. Didn't at all. Yeah. What do you what, what do you think that's all about? It's so weird. Honestly, I don't know. Um, when I okay, I had an experience recently that I don't think I can talk about yet because it, it, nothing has aired yet. Um, mm. But I, I filmed for quite a big show recently. And I thought it was very interesting, and I hope the people that I was with don't watch this stream um, because I'm maybe about not to be very nice. Um, so I was listening to what these other individuals were saying at this time, and what struck me was that the show was uh, about an issue pertaining to women. And I, I suppose, you know, as far as like right left wing goes, I, I guess I was like the only sort of conservative there was another girl there who was conservative but she was in a different issue she wanted to talk about um biological men in women's prisons which i think is a hugely pervasive thing that we should mm. all be very aware of but you know besides that everybody else was kind of to the left of of the whole issue um even the feminists were very to the left like they they obviously were very pro-biology but they were to the they were still to the left as a general yeah. rule so what i found really interesting was that <laughs> they're not compelling they're not compelling their arguments are not compelling and while i very much agree with what they're saying i'm like if you're the spokespeople for this message and this narrative and uh, i kind of make sense why it took matt walsh saying it for this to get any traction because mm. when you have not good messengers the message gets lost uh, that yeah. might be bitchy but i kind of think that's just generally maybe part of the problem with this is that you have imperfect people and we're all imperfect, but you have very mm. imperfect messengers trying to deliver a very complex issue and message. And when you fall short of that, it never picks up traction. And like you said, I mean, then there's the whole getting doxxed, harassed, banned. It just sucks. It just sucks. Yeah, that's that's fascinating because Matt Walsh is such a good messenger. Like, he, he I is. think he he I think he's a frustrated actor. Like the the way he he manages to sort of articulate himself and put that whole thing together mm -hmm. is is fascinating. And yeah, but perhaps perhaps it is that with the messenger because it's so easy to come across 
as like nasty or unempathetic or, or all of those sorts of things, particularly if you get frustrated when you're trying yes. to impart the message. And it is frustrating. You know? yeah. Yes, <laughs> it is. Well, that's it what is. I noticed. I, and I hope when, when this thing comes out, I'm, I, I would actually like, I hope people will watch it. I don't know. I, they might cut me out of it. I don't know who's to say, but I hope whatever comes out, people get to view what happened because, and I wish I could give more details. I'm sorry for being so vague. Um, but no, yeah, it was just so interesting because I was sitting there listening and I'm thinking, huh, because the first thing that people want to do when they talk about this is get bogged down in the biological conversation. And that is huge. Mm. Of course it is huge, right? But I feel like if you're engaging with somebody who thinks that there's a differentiation between sex and gender, I mean, you're already arguing from different viewpoints. So you sort of have to shut that down and then have a more fruitful conversation about the net effect of changing language, of including men in women's spaces, all this sort of stuff. But if you get stuck in the, what is a woman? Like, what is biology? Well, I mean, then you're getting down to the really nitty gritty, itty bitty little details that let's be real, the majority of us simply do not understand. I'm free to admit, I freely admit, that I don't have, you know, I'm not a doctor. I don't have comprehension of how this feeds into this and that. I just go, I have uh, female anatomy and I, and I bleed mm. once a month. Sorry to be graphic. Um, <laughs> so th therefore I must be a female, you know? It's, yeah. So, but we get bogged down in this crap and it stops us from having the broader conversation. So the message gets lost, if that makes sense. Yeah. And the thing is, it is important, like um, you made a video a little while ago, didn't you, uh, didn't you, on the issue of biological males in women's prisons. Uh. Um, I think that over the next five or ten years is if, if this kind of gender thing keeps going. And I think there might be um, a pushback, you know, with the closure of the Tavistock Clinic. I think people are kind of starting to wake up to it. But that could be a really really dangerous issue in the next five to ten years do you reckon Girl, it's it's going to be yeah i mean it's an issue now the only problem is that so what i'm noticing and, and i think this is actually the greatest issue with it people believe because you're in prison your rights stop yeah and i get that to a point like say i get that when it comes to say like a serial abuser i get that when it comes to uh people who abuse children uh mm. i get i get that i get the context in which that makes sense however the majority of women that are in prison are there for not minor offenses, but nonviolent offenses. So the majority of them are there for like drug crimes, uh, prostitution, things like this. Yeah. They're not there because they stab somebody to death. Of course, there are people in women's prisons who have done things like that, but they're certainly not the majority. And so the problem mm. is that you have people who go, well, I don't really care because I have to assume that the, these women who are in prison, they're probably buttholes and they're probably crappy people. And so there, I, I, I don't care if they're being, you know, raped and assaulted by biological men who come into the prison and stop taking their hormones. And it's really sad because ultimately, you know, these are women who serve shorter sentences by and large than men. And so they get let out earlier only to basically be re-victimized again and again and again and again. It just, yeah. it's just a horrible, horrible thing. But we don't talk about it because we have an attitude towards inmates. Yeah, and that is a really good point you raise um, with the attitude towards inmates because I've I've noticed that too very much, so particularly with men. Um, you know, when when men go to prison, like they they make those people make those terrible jokes about horrible prison jokes. rape and like. Oh. Remember when Kyle during the Kyle Rittenhouse trial, yes, yes. and there was that horrific meme going around the internet when he had a, a PTSD episode um, during the, the court when he was trying to relive what happened to him and there were those mm -hmm. photos of that facial. You saw that tweet yes. that went around. I mean, how, how can people in good conscience do that? No matter how much you hate someone, it just blows my mind that people can think that way. I know, it's terrible. Honestly, it, it, I mean, it's low-hanging fruit though as well. I yeah. think that's why people go for it. And it's so, it's, so, it's so sad because, I mean, in that specific situation, Kyle is such a sweet boy. Mm. Um, I got a lot of time for that kid. And he just happened to get caught up in a really messed up situation and became, you know, like a public figure for something that he didn't want to be a public figure for. So, But, you know, that aside, you're 100% right. I mean, that's the joke, right, that people make all the time. And whenever I talk about this issue, I find that people say things to me like, well, why do you suddenly care about, you know, the women getting raped in prison? You don't care about them. And you've never talked mm. about that. When I have. I have yes, you have. Women. I have, 100%. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've heard you. You talk about it very well. I'm like, this is not, I don't believe that anybody, just by virtue of the fact they're a prisoner, should get, you know, assaulted. Uh, caveat to that, if you abuse kids, uh, you're free, you're fair game to me i don't care 
Um, mm. That's just because children are unbelievably innocent and nobody yeah. should be targeting them. Um, and there, like I said, there's a few instances where I can understand the dehumanizing of a person because of their actions, especially if they're not remorseful and they're like a serial killer. But yeah, again, like, I don't think anybody should be getting attacked in prison. I don't, I don't think this is, you know, an appropriate thing. And I guess it kind of makes sense why recidivism rates are so high, why people uh, in prison basically come out more messed up than when they went in. And what's so sad, again, about the female side of things is that, uh, do you remember when Kim Kardashian got involved in uh, prison reform? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reform? She went to, talk to Trump about it, yeah. Uh-huh. So there was, I believe there was a woman that she interviewed called Dawn Jackson. My understanding... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Dawn Jackson is currently housed at a, at a facility called Edna Mahan Correctional in New Jersey. Dawn, uh, as far as my understanding goes, um, was the victim, I think, growing up and or I guess like throughout her life of, you know, intense sexual violence and things like that. Mm. And she did an interview with um, a friend's outlet uh, called Redux, which is actually a feminist outlet, but they do a lot of really good work. They do a lot of really yeah. good work about child abuse and whatnot. Um, and Dawn Jackson basically said, having these biological men in the prison with us, it's kind of being re-victimized all over again. It's just this like psychological, it messes with you because you're, mm. you're constantly concerned about your well-being because it's well known that these people come in and stop taking hormones. They're fully intact as well, Daisy. Like, <laughs> no bottom yeah. surgery. No, no bottom surgery. No, no oh, a lot God. of them don't have any kind of surgery, especially in oh, California God. where they can just self-ID. It's really, oh. it's really messed up. And you have these poor women who've been abused, being re-abused and continuing to be abused. I don't know, it just it just makes me very upset. So. Well, there's sort of an incentive, isn't there, if you're a male prisoner of a nefarious character to identify as trans, you know, isn't there, to get to get moved to a woman's prison? Mm -hmm. That's the motivation. I mean, and people don't like this. And I, when I made the video about the biological men in women's prisons, uh, Thankfully, I didn't get too much pushback about this, which I appreciated, but there's a couple of feminist groups. Girl, I'm so funny. No one is more surprised than me that I have so much to do with these these feminist groups. Like, no one is, oh my God, it blows my mind. They help me so much with these, like, these videos I make, and I just go, mm -hmm. ah, but we disagree. I want to wear stilettos, and you think they're a tool of the patriarchy. <laughs> Um, but there's a couple of these groups that have looked into the statistics about it. And one in particular basically found out that in the federal prison system here in the U.S., 48 percent of the trans identified men, so biological men who identify as women, are sex mm. offenders. Uh, oh, yeah. Wow. Or, or maybe it's just trans people in general. I can't remember specifically, but 48 percent of them are sex offenders, as opposed to 11 percent of the general federal population. Just put that wow. in perspective. Now, of in California of the population of trans identified men so men who identify as women who want to move to female facilities of the i believe i can't remember how many requests somewhere in the realm of like 400 or something like that 33 mm. percent of them so a third of them are sex offenders oh my god ah that's you, so alarming isn't is it is it's that not so alarming <laughs> like uh, and and the thing is like you know it's just for a qual, it, I know it, it makes me go like that too. And like as a, as a qualifier for the YouTube overlords who will inevitably peer over our shoulder at everything we're saying, we're yeah. not saying that all trans inmates are no, sex offenders. Not at all. We're not saying that, and we're also not saying that um, all trans women who are in male prisons who want to move to female prisons are opportunistic are, exactly you know? yeah just a qualifier for any nefarious leftist who might be watching this <laughs> neither sydney nor i um is saying that but no. you you can't to, to deny the reality that some men mm -hmm. are opportunistic and would absolutely see that as an incentive is is insane like yeah. you, you you cannot deny the reality that some people are bad people can you yep. and that that is absolutely a motivation yeah i mean totally i mean i think that's what this issue is kind of indicating is that if there is a will there is a way and if the way is to get better better treatment and it, like realistically there was actually one story that came out of the new jersey prison edna mahan where mm. a biological male who had transferred to the female facility transferred back to the male facility oh. and said that the violence that the women experience at the hands of prison guards and all this kind of crap count me out like i am not interested and went oh, right on back oh to my... the men yeah it's just oh like, that's insane even the fact that that's anyway edna mahan is a mess if anybody's interested in looking into it feel free it is just a 
it is just a psycho psycho situation and I, my heart goes out to these women who are in the situation but yeah i mean of course you listen if you have self id laws that say that you yourself can determine if you are something and then move to a different facility or whatever based on that self assessment you will always have people abusing that system and the sad yeah. thing is that even the 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 individual um called michelle norsworthy who i talk about in my prison video mm. um michelle was put in prison for a very long time and during that process uh, in the 90s was like i i am a woman I, and i want to i want to trans uh, transition to a woman and then i had this like big fight basically with um the correctional system and with the you know the state of california in order to get hormones and and, and surgeries and things and then during that fight, basically, Michelle was really the one kind of who opened the door to a lot of this. And Michelle now is speaking out against it because she's like, I, I didn't mean for this to be the case. This wasn't, I didn't want women to be abused and this is horrific what's happening to them. And mm. so it's kind of interesting that the person who kind of opened that door to this whole situation is even turning around and going, no, 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 I, I didn't want any of this. And Michelle has actively said, these are like actual dudes. This, these are her words. She says, these are actual dudes who are basically just taking advantage and then going in with women. Oh anyway. my God. There you go. It's, sorry, I'm, wow. I'm being very depressing. I'm sorry. No, 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 don't, don't apologize for it. Cause these are, <laughs> these are, Im these are important things. And, and you know, like yeah. I said, and I've said this for a while, um, the excuse that the sort of, um, you know, gender fluid feminist brigade use mm. when it comes to say mentioning the, you know, uh, biological males in prisons issue or, yeah. you know, slightly you know, or less extreme, you know, um, biological males in women's sport, um, you know, or things like the We Spar incidents where there was a yeah. fella in there flapping his old fella around and then <laughs> the the poor woman who tried to complain about it to the counter had this male feminist come up to her and call her, I think he called her a dickhead, pardon the language. It's like, um, are you just like mansplaining to a woman <gasps> what a woman is and who she should or shouldn't be comfortable with in her change room, whatever. Yeah. But anyway, um, they kind of, when you point it out to them, they dismiss it and go, oh, but it's, it's hardly an issue. Oh, it, it very rarely, oh, it rarely happens. It really, rarely happens. It's like, okay, so how many of these incidents then are acceptable to you mm -hmm. before you say it's an issue? Yeah, it's like, true. Well, put a number on it. <laughs> well, they can't. Well, that's the thing is they can't, right? Because no. if, if, the sad thing about this is this would take someone or at least this group of people to acknowledge the fact that and this is so interesting Daisy and this is why I love this topic it's depressing mm. as hell but I love this topic <laughs> because there is research into this right and and in, in order for them to acknowledge this they would have to admit that mm. male criminality doesn't change just because you change to the opposite sex and this is proven because there was a study done, I believe e it was, uh, I can't remember the exact date, but it was, it was not too long ago. It was done out of Sweden and they looked at basically criminality habits in uh, individuals who were male, you know, at, I nearly just said at birth, who were um, <laughs> biological males who then, you know, transitioned and began identifying as women. And what they found was the vast majority of them continued to do criminal things it doesn't change just yeah. because you're now a woman it just it doesn't i'm sorry and and for people to not acknowledge that is it again this is what i'm saying about living in reality yeah. they actively deny reality for their world to make sense and this is again i come back to the fact this is why i respect the trans people in my life is because they're like and i get the reality of what's going on that's why yeah. they're not offended when you know we us women when we say to them like hey you're cool like you're, you're great people, but you're different. They go, okay, fair enough. Or when you go, hey, this is not okay to have biological men in with women. They go, yeah, fair enough. Because they're not mm. emotionally attached to the fact that you're telling them the truth. They're just like, that's yeah. just the truth. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sweet. Yeah. And I think most, most trans people are like that as well. Like, you know, we, there is a, there's a difference between, you know, trans people at large and trans activists. Yeah. Because trans activists, remember, are made up of a whole lot of people who aren't actually trans. You know, <laughs> so but you true. know the trans lobby, <laughs> as I call them, I'm yeah. guessing probably a minority of them are actually trans simply yeah. by virtue of population numbers. I like I that the large chunk of them, possibly the majority, are cis heterosexual allies mm -hmm. who want to jump in on it for for social class it must i reckon it must drive the your everyday trans person absolutely 
bonkers. Yeah, it has to. Seeing their reputations sullied by mm. people pushing this alternate reality. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it would. This is how we feel about feminists, right? Exactly. Like we, we look at these women who go, "Wow, well, I mean, you can't be a woman," and we're just like. I do, what, what do you want, crack? Like, what is happening yeah. right now? Can you do you want to sit down, please, ma'am? Have a seat, please. And it's the same thing. Yeah. I mean, it, we listen to them and we just think, oh, my God, you're you're so crazy. And the, I mean, mm -hmm. I guess the reality is that they are actually women, so it's a little bit different. But it's still, <laughs> it's the same in principle where you just think, I want to run far away from you because you mm. are a Looney Tune and you're giving us all a bad name. Okay, don't you hate the fact that when we talk about these issues as women and we're like, hey, this really sucks and I hate the fact that, you know, we're being erased and all these horrible things are happening. You always get these like reply guys that are like, okay, but you brought this on yourselves. And I'm like, oh my God. Sir, when? <gasps> when? We didn't, I didn't. <laughs> Present company is excluded. We did not. <laughs> Cynthia and I did not. <laughs> I'm like, in, that's just so interesting, friend. Oh my god! Oh god, it kills no. me. It really know, kills me. I know exactly what you mean, and and I think I think to myself, you are literally doing the same thing that feminists do, which you hate, which is putting all women in the same category and ascribing to them all the exact same personality yep. and behavioral traits that mm -hmm. you don't like. It's like, sir, here is a mirror. I suggest yeah. you look into it. Yep. Oh my God. I am so, I am so with you there. I swear, I reckon modern feminism yeah. generates more misogyny than it actually eradicates. Oh, yes. I 100% I agree. It's kind of funny because feminism in a lot of ways is. Do you remember when it, there was like a period of time where everybody was obsessed with it and everybody wanted to yeah. talk about it? Kind of fell off yeah. the map. Like, and in a lot of ways, it really fell off the map. It really but it's did. it's sort of it's kind of interesting because it's like kind of floating around in this trans issue but it, no one's attacking it's kind of weird no one's attacking <clears throat> feminism they're attacking the trans movement which ca cannibalized the feminism if that makes sense mm. and it was it's again it's funny because now that i know feminists that i'm like actually friends with no one is more support surprised than i about this development <laughs> um I always say to them, like, I don't get it. Like, what are you again? And they'll be like, I'm a, you know, radical feminist. And I'm like, oh, you're the ones that don't like stilettos and makeup. Gotcha. And then yeah. we disagree on everything else. And then I get other ones that are like, I don't know, I'm just a feminist. But what I'm realizing is that the ones that we don't like are the rad femmes to an extent and yeah. the intersectional feminists. Yeah. The intersectional ones are the bad ones. <laughs> they're the yeah. crazy ones. They they're are all crazy, insane. But they're the but worst. They really are because they try, it's that saying like if you try to please everyone, you'll end up pleasing no one. Yeah. And they really do try to please everyone. That's why they kind mm -hmm. of hold these two totally contradictory schools of thought um, mm -hmm. on gender and sex. But they do it, I think, because a lot of them don't actually know what they're talking about. No. Um, they've got like nine million university degrees. And, and look, I, I have three, I'm a big fan of university. I have three degrees myself, big artsy, artsy degrees. I do, Ooh. they're all... They're all wonderfully useless degrees, but I did enjoy oh, doing them. I have a very large uh, <laughs> student loan debt, of course, but uh. I enjoyed it. But, you know, they, they think I've spent five million years at university, so I know all of this stuff when actually they don't know anything and they uh -uh. get all their news from Twitter um, mm -hmm. and they get addicted to kind of the likes and the retweets and the hot takes. Mm -hmm. So they think they sort of know everything, but actually they know nothing and they say stuff that doesn't make sense but they never realize it doesn't make sense because everyone just applauds them all the time. Yeah, They're it's, the ones it's that like you and I gook. hate. Yeah, it's <laughs> They're the ones gook. that like, yeah. yeah. I mean, I always find like, there's very few of them that I come into contact with these days because again, sort of the realm that I'm floating around in, I don't get too much interaction with crazy people because, well, mm. that's a lie. I always get a lot of interaction with crazy people, but not crazy <laughs> feminists, not so much now. <laughs> They've kind of fallen off the map a little bit. Yeah. But when I do notice them or engage with them or, or find something psycho that they've said, it always, it's so interesting. They just speak flim flam to each other. It's like mm. they've, they've developed their own language at Feminist Island and this is how they interact. <laughs> with these like weird, <laughs> weird coded words and I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, is this English? Oh yeah, no, Feminist Island, Daisy. This is a, uh, yeah, this is a thing. Feminist Island, it's a new, it's, it's a new thing. I, yeah. I love that. Not to be oh confused my uh, with, you know, like leftist island or trans island. They're all trans different. Island. Climate change island is my favorite one. <laughs> That's my absolute favorite. The one that the, the, cli the climate cult, did you hear like Nancy Pelosi the other night justifying spending 
500 billion dollars on climate change stuff because she said it was for mother earth and that we couldn't go against the planet like she literally said mother earth and i'm like i'm sorry are you in a cult mm, yeah <laughs> I'm so, listen, I'm just impressed that she was able to string words into sentences without slurring. Or was she oh, slurring? that's true. Was that's she true. doing no, her she Nancy was at, Pelosi? She's, do you remember that clip that went around of her like doing these ones and, and literally talking in a language that was like not any earthly oh, yeah. language? Yes. And we all thought, she, I thought she was drunk. Well, well I think she, I think she <laughs> likes the old bottle, the old Nancy. Does yeah. she really? Yeah. Well, this okay. If you listen to any of the the speeches and things she gives, it it seems like she's always drunk, or yeah. like at least on some. Okay, this is the this is the problem with having people in office that are a hundred years old. <laughs> like, I know. I feel oh like I'm God. going crazy. I, dude, I. <sighs> I think Australian <laughs> politicians are the dumbest people in the world. Oh, I would are. die on this hill. They are the dumbest of all the politicians. Yeah. But American politicians are just like geriatric. I don't know what's <laughs> worse. I don't know what's worse. You have Bernie Sanders who's just like, ah, da, da, when he talks. And I just go, I don't even, I, like, what are you trying to start a car? And then my favorite one is when Biden says anything. And I just oh, look at him. Joke. I have to turn all the sound down because I get secondhand embarrassment so badly that, like, when I'm nervous, I go pink, like, through my neck and into my ears. And when I watch him talk, I start to get that nervousness because I'm like, don't fuck up. Don't, f oh, sorry. I don't know if I'm swearing in stream. But I'm like, oh, don't I'm screw up. Don't allowed. screw up. Don't, don't, don't. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He said it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Where is he going? That's, that's oh. me watching oh him start to turn it off or down i can't handle it <gasps> poor old poor old joe i i swear like um i used to sort of laugh you know when joe would do his thing and it was been going on for ages like during the election campaign when he was like before he was even the nominee we all knew he was he'd slip up and we'd laugh and go oh joe oh bless him it's so funny but it's i actually find it it's actually got kind of distressing to watch it is because horrible. what i see it's what i yeah like like you Ooh. i look at it and i go oh my god oh my god oh my god you went there and what i think we're watching is an old man who is clearly not in his right mind being yeah. completely exploited by some of the worst people in the world yep i mean yeah that's basically the size of it you have a guy who is suffering from some kind of cognitive decline it's probably got mm. Alzheimer's, let's be real. And you have shoved him into a position that is incredibly stressful and challenging, even for somebody who has all of their faculties. Yeah. And he is just the puppet. Oh, God, did you watch that clip of him the other day where he finished signing something and then he tried to hand the pen away and he's like, Oh, no, I missed that one. Oh, my God. People turn it into a really funny meme where they're like, when the edible hits and it's just him going. <laughs> and I was like, don't do drugs. Don't do drugs. Can't but stay away from drugs, kids. It made me laugh. Oh, I'll send it to you. I oh, yes, go. please do. I'll see if I please can find do. it now. You can watch it and laugh. I Hold live I, I live. I live. for the memes. It's I absolutely so, live for the memes. It's so bad. I like so much <laughs> weird crap. Oh, my God. I liked this one today. You'll enjoy it. Oh, yeah? Hold on. No, please send them all to me. <laughs> I hate doing... Okay, you know what? <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. When you're when you're streaming and you want to show something to somebody else, and you guys are like, "Okay, Sydney, but what is it?" Sorry. Maybe sorry. maybe Daisy will share her screen with you, and she'll show you. Yes, it's... or I'll show, or I'll show you. Uh, what I might do, I'm, I'll show you afterwards because you know what, Sydney, I am so notoriously technologically inept on my channel. It's like a running <laughs> joke, and this is actually the first time I have used the Streamyard software Ooh. like by myself in my life. And I'm actually really pleased with how it's going. Good. I haven't screwed it up totally yet. Um, no, you just brought oh, me wait. on to be chaotic. <laughs> what about Callum? You could share the screen. Oh, Callum is going to help. Ooh. Callum, is, Callum is going to help. Okay, but you might want to you might want to just you know make sure that what I'm sending you is like kosher before you, no before you put it. On. Okay, the reason I found that. All right, here's the here's the clip. There you go. I sent it to you. Ah. Thank you. Thanks. Sorry, you. that, that took this. a second. That was a lot of scrolling. No, you think no, I would have okay. like, good recall on things, but I don't. So sorry about my uh, <laughs> hair readjusting. It's you know when you wash it and it's fluffy, that's where I'm at. Oh no, that's mine last night. I have so much hairspray in it. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm watching this. <laughs> it's so bad. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, let's share this one. Okay, Callum is going to share it again. 
One day I'll learn to, I'll learn to do this by myself, everyone. Hey, the I'll fact that you're even the fact you're even streaming is like remarkable to me because I still have no <laughs> idea. Oh god. All right. Here we go. This is funny. <laughs> He like, <laughs> oh my it's so God. bad. The that full clip is, is really, really embarrassing. I think I have it saved actually in Google Docs. If I'm sure everybody's seen it by now, but it's really embarrassing. The full thing is just like him being super confused. Oh my God. Make Poor sure kind of. Joe. Well, uh, yeah, I don't know though. Like the guys kind of, the guys kind of had a lot of time to be like an evil human being. So I guess I don't really pity him all that much. What is this one? Yeah, it's sort of hard, isn't it? Because I, I'm in that uh, stage as well. I think I look at him. I think you're clearly a frail old man being exploited, but you've also been like one of the worst human beings on the planet for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. So does it maybe it sort of neutralizes my my sympathy and my hatred a bit to be sort of level? Yeah. But, um, yeah, that 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 was a very entertaining clip and a very naughty meme that you sent I, me, Sydney. <laughs> yeah. I get I gave you the full one too in case you want it. So. Oh my there god. Go. Oh my god. <laughs> no, it's funny. this one's okay. The the long one's okay. It's a Fox <gasps> News clip, but it is embarrassing. Like for yeah. us to be a world superpower and for this to be the the person that's leading us, it's just really embarrassing. Oh god. So. Now let look, have I done this properly? Yes. <laughs> I think I might Oh hooray, I've done it. Here we go. Look oh, at him. Oh, oh baby. Oh the baby. Oh my god. Girl, you're you're too nice. I watched that and I was like, Ugh! I was like, no. But he's he's oh, like handing gosh. it off to another person, like, Ugh, take it from me. Ugh. I it's, know, and he looks sort of, he looks sort of frightened. He's like, Where where am mm -hmm. I? It's because there was loud noises and he was like, What do I do? Ah! Oh, do? oh my god, oh my god. Like and mm -hmm. speak look, speaking of the speaking of the presidency, mm -hmm. um, I have to I have to ask you, uh, before we jump and we have a little look at some of these super chats that have been coming in, because I think there's some good ones. Um Donald Trump has hinted many times very strongly yeah. that he's going to run again in 2024. And I have to ask you, do you think that is a good idea? Or do you think there's a little bit too much baggage at this point? Um, that is a fantastic question. That um, is the million dollar question. I think the fact of the matter is that he still has a really strong base, but, uh, and I, I freely admit that I err on the side of negativity. So everyone take this with a grain of salt, but I think if he runs again, he will lose. And the reason mm -hmm. I say this is not because I don't think that he's done some tremendous things. I think he really did. And mm -hmm. when people go, oh, we didn't do enough. Well, I mean, he is coming up against a very challenging opponent in the deep state. And uh, yeah. and the just the generality of what the American government system is. So I, I actually think he did quite well, all things considered. And he also yeah. kind of sacrificed himself on the altar of... Uh, conservatism in a way uh, in the end there so I don't but I don't think he will win and the reason is because look how hard they fought to get him to lose the you know 2020 election why would it be any different in 2024 and I don't think that there's such a renewed interest in having him back I because I think people get sick of all of this um I just think that I just think he'll be just coming up against the monolith and 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 I don't know if we can beat that I think that if he loses again people will be so unbelievably angry. It will be like, you know, the whole 2020 thing, but on steroids. Uh, so yeah. yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with it. I, I, lo I love DeSantis and honestly, I don't see him leaving being governor to be real with you, but if he mm. ran, I think that would be tremendous. And I think he would stand a better chance than Trump because I think people also view DeSantis as somebody who's done everything that he set out to do. I think with Trump, yeah. they're like they they criticize him because they're like, oh, we didn't do enough. I think that's what's happening now. I don't know if that's if that's how other people feel. That's kind of what I'm observing though. Mm. So that's yeah. that's sort of what I feel. I mean, um, I know like there are tons of people who say Trump didn't do enough, but I I always say he did some good stuff. And like yeah, I don't great think, stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't think any of us can comprehend the power and the malignancy of the forces that he was up against. He would 100%. be he was, he was up against stuff that not, most mere mortals can't even fathom. fathom. I'm not even yep. yeah. 
I'm not even being like, you know, hyperbolic here. It's it's insane. No, it's true. Um, yeah, it's, true. it's completely insane. And um, I, I, I love DeSantis also, and I think he would be brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know if you're DeSantis why you'd give up a really good job where yep. everyone loves you mm -hmm. um, while you have little children and a wife who's just recovered from cancer to mm -hmm. go and try and be president of the United States, which is the worst job in the world. Mm -hmm. You know no, what exactly. I mean? Yeah, yeah, 100%. And I think like, I mean... I'm, he's running for governor again at the end of the year, so it's kind of like, you know. Mm. I mean, I, I know think, by yeah. that point it'll be a bit different because it's a couple years away from the presidential election, but it's like, I don't see the dude. I don't, I just, I don't know. I, I don't know. American mm. politics well, is psychotic. Let me just it's, say it's, that. It's an interesting game, American politics. Uh -huh. It's just um, like weird little microcosm of depression. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only it's a very loud, <laughs> noisy microcosm that like everyone in the world pays attention to. I it's know. American. It's so I know. strange. <laughs> I know. Speaking of which, I've got a super chat here from the lovely Nat D. Now, I think if I press this button, it shows up. Oh, my God, I did it. Hooray. <gasps> I'm, I'm, I'm nailing this thing. And Nat D says, love it to see you, Nat, says, do you feel, Sydney, that Australian conservatism has more in common with U.S. libertarianism because of the fusion of politics and religion in the US. Um, do I feel that Australian conservatism has more in common? No. Uh, mm, yes and no. I, honestly, I feel like American politics is its own thing. And I feel American factions of the right wing are its own thing because and maybe you'll correct me if I'm wrong here, Daisy, my perception of American, uh, sorry, Aussie conservatism has mm. always been that Aussies are kind of like go along to get along. And even libertarians aren't go along to get along. They're like, I want to be left alone and I want you to go away from me. But they'll still <laughs> fight for that. Whereas Aussies are kind of just like, meh. Mm. 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 Yeah, I mean, Australian Australian conservatism, like it's it's not as right wing as American conservatism. Definitely not. Yeah. Like def definitely not. Um, it's sort of like somewhere between the moderates and the, the, the right faction of the Republicans, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Australian conservatism is, um, and I th it is so mostly secular. That's what I think the huge difference between Australian conservatism and American conservatism is. Oh, yeah. um, is that so much of, of American um, conservatism is built on Christianity, um, mm, and you yes. know there are some real party line issues I think with American conservatism that are very much tied in with um, religious belief, which is neither good or bad. It's just an observation. Yeah. Um, but as Australia. Yeah, it, it's it's got a real. There is a few Christian conservatives here, but there's the not that secularism. Many, no, there's really yeah. not that many, and they're not very open about it, and they don't mm -hmm. sort of wear it as a point of pride. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's probably what the huge difference is: is the secular nature of Australian conservatism. I think also, I mean, I, like a lot of my friends who are who would say that they're actually conservative in Australia, they're like, oh, you know, I I think they they still are in that mindset where they value security over freedom and even libertarians yeah. here in the u.s are still not like that they're and like i said they're just americans are so much more aggressive about everything that everything. is true and so aussies <laughs> just lack that you know oomph towards a lot of this stuff and and again that's part of why they're awesome part of mm. why they drove me crazy when i lived there yep mm -hmm. yeah i think definitely the prioritizing security over freedom is a yep. big thing like freedom was a, yep. a dirty word in australia I for know. a while so is like patriotism. literally yeah the two dirty words in australia mm -hmm. um oh here's an interesting one sydney says multi drido what do you think about how feminists are trying to promote women to be bimbos instead of boss ladies? Uh, Daisy and Lauren Chen made a video on this topic. Did you, have yeah. you seen the the bimbo push on on TikTok by any chance? <laughs> yes. What do you think of it? I don't know. I asked um, one of one of my girlfriends who is a feminist who helps me um, sometimes do research for really big topics because she's really good at finding information. Um, mm. I asked her about this and I was like, "What the hell is this all about?" And she was like. Cause she is a feminist thing. And that's what was so interesting to me as I was like, wait a minute. So we've yeah. gone from, I am the queen bee to I, I got the big boobies and I'm gonna rah, rah, rah. And she was like, yeah, <laughs> that's effectively it. Honestly, I don't know what to make of this. I just think that they do things that are antithetical to what they think they should do. And that's what they run with. And I think that's kind of what this bizarre brand of feminism is, is just being antithetical. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's bizarre. Cause I did, I did, um, 
I did it like a deep dive on it in my video. Yeah. And, and they literally, not only do they tie it in with feminism, um, they tie it in with communism. I like know. If they, it's like, like a, how? How? And the point that I made in my so video. Insane. I know it's insane. My point in my video, my video was like, okay, okay, you can say this all you want. You can try to be cool. You can do your Gen Z thing. <laughs> yeah. um, but you can't go shelling out thousands and thousands of dollars to the multi billion dollar uber capitalistic beauty industry and yeah. encourage other women to do the same and call yourself a communist revolutionary. Yep. Like, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I don't care how you try to subvert it. I don't care how cool you try to be. That that doesn't work. That's like square peg, round hole. <laughs> yeah, but if they're bimbos, they're probably not that smart, though. That's probably why. That is probably why. And actually, um, this is hilarious. Like, the, the main uber queen bimbo on TikTok, um, her name is Christy Schlepecker. Um, she, it's a fabulous name. Chrissy, Chrissy, yeah, Chrissy Schlepecker is her name. And she did like a, an interview and stuff. And when she was talking about intelligence and bimboism, she said, um, we're like redefining <laughs> what men specifically considered intelligence to be. Oh. And I thought, Chrissy, um, I think that what men consider intelligence to be is also what most women consider intelligence to be. Which so, is intelligence? Is that which just, is intel just intelligence? I don't. It just to me, it sounds like stupid women who are redefining <sighs> words to make themselves try to be, to try to sound smart. <laughs> they basically, oh, that's funny. Here is a good uh, comment from Stacey Needham says, how have we gotten to the point where we can't even define what a woman is? Like that is, that is the multi-million dollar question, I think. How, how did we get to this point oh i can tell you it's, it's it's because when you start and i hate to quote ben shapiro but when you start <laughs> <laughs> when you start valuing emotions and feelings over reality that's how you end up at this point so you know facts don't care about your feelings i mean he's, he's right i mean that's kind of how you end up at this at this sort of crossroads is that we told people that how they feel supersedes the reality of the world that we live in. We told people that how they identify, how they feel internally, all of this must be validated mm. at all costs. And the net effect of that is you have people who go, well, I want to be a woman. I'm not one, but I want to be, and I am now, and you just have to deal with it. And so when we go, no, you're not, they go, yes, I am, because I say I am, and you have to deal with it. And it's like, ugh. Because I mean, again, once you take leave, or, or like I suppose in a way, like I was saying before, once you get sort of bogged down in this dumb conversation about whether or not there's a differentiation between sex and gender, we immediately lost the game. Yeah. And now all of you just lost the game. Mm-hmm. Yep. It just you when, when he... oh, Daisy, you didn't get my joke. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, no. That's something I'm notorious for as well, Sydney. Oh, my God. My subscribers will laugh at me for this. I never, I never get references or jokes on the internet whenever okay. I'm streaming. And Do then remember... they spend half an hour laughing at me. <laughs> Do you remember that? Oh, you just lost the game. No, no. Uh, where was that? Oh my God, lady, were you were you even a child in the two thousands? What are, what is this? No, do you remember <gasps> when, when you would be like, "Ha, huh, you lost the game," and you say that to your friends? They'd be like, "Ah." If you thought oh. about the game, you lost the game. Don't worry about it. It's okay. I'll just you know pretend. What? I'll just pretend I, that you understood. No, no, no. You know what? I think this is this is where we're seeing that I'm Generation Y, and you're like you're you're a millennial. You're like there three years a, older than me. Or two oh years, no, or, I, I oh, you've actually made my day telling me that I'm like two or three years older than you. That's not true. <laughs> what, I don't care. Okay, maybe I'll be a bimbo right now. How old are people in Gen Y? I I always think it's people born between like before 1991. It's that kind of faction of the of the generation. Okay, I am I get full on nineties baby. Okay, you're a nineties baby. I'm an eighties baby. Yeah. What? No, I'm, I'm an eighties baby. I, I was born. I was born in nineteen eighty eight, and I think I love you even more now because you have completely made my <laughs> made my eighty eight. Good grief. Eighty eight. Eighty eight. I just turned the old three four. Can you believe that? Huh. 
Yeah, I do. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm getting I'm old. I'm nearing 30 and it's just stressing me out. And the other night I was out with my uh, my human and I was like, hey, we should go get drinks. And I am a notorious not drinker. Like I just- Oh, me too. So whenever, whenever I'm on streams like this and I'm like hyped up, people are like, is she drunk? Like, is she on drugs? No, nope, I, I dead set don't do any of that stuff. I'm just a weirdo. So <laughs> when we were out the other night, I was like, oh man, like I just had this like, you know, third life crisis. And I was like, you know, what is it? A third of my life crisis? I don't know how to articulate that. And I was like, oh third, that'll God. Do, third life crisis. So I was like, let's go to a wine bar. And he's like, I don't want to do that. It's what? And I was like, a oh, wine bar now, you will take me. So we went to a wine bar and, but neither of us can drink at all it just sucks and so uh you know we had a couple of drinks we had a lot of fun it was a great night you know it was mm. really really enjoyable uh and then the next day i had a hangover after having i'm not even kidding probably like four glasses of wine <laughs> which i feel like baby sydney would have been like you dumb lady <laughs> pathetic <laughs> but now i'm like <gasps> like getting out of bed at, at, you know, we fell asleep on the couch that's how that's how not functional oh gosh <laughs> no you know what you will really enjoy <laughs> turning 30 i actually loved turning 30 i find i the don't 30s... want to <laughs> no 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 30 uh... is good i had that exact um that exact thought before i turned that like when i was 29 i was you... saying Weeping. right this pardon you were weeping inside. I was, I was doing. weeping inside, and I was literally going around saying, like, unironically, right? This is the year I start. I start uh, lying about my age. I'm just going to tell everyone I'm 29 forever. And then I turned 30, and I actually felt great. I thought I feel less confused. Uh, I feel more mature. No, and I've actually really, um, really enjoyed my 30s more than my 20s. So everyone says that. Everyone says yeah, this. I really? Don't know. Yeah. No, I think I guess... you'll be fine. I, I look forward to it in a way that I am ready to not be a potato, but I think I'll always be a potato. So I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know how that's going to go. <laughs> I have no idea. No, but there no, you go. You I have these, it. like these, these, these moments, these quarter third life crises where mm. I go, I need to go to a wine bar and then I do it and then I have regret and then I don't do it again for six months. That I have these all... periodically, you see. That is okay. Mm -hmm. That is all part of the process of, of hitting 30 but no i think you i think you will like it very much i wouldn't worry um oh here we go this is from the aspie of the west this is when we were talking about how stupid australian politicians are given the energy crisis in europe now pretty stiff competition of stupidity with their politicians Ooh, you that best is a good believe point it. Yes. that is a very good point they are pretty dumb i don't know i still maintain that australian politicians are the dumbest of the dumb they just, do you, what do you think it is about Australian politicians? Because I know some of them who are, they're, they're very smart and they're very nice, but then you, you look at like Anastasia Palaszczuk, who mm -hmm. is the Premier of Queensland, where I live and all my subs have heard me rant about her mm -hmm. many times during COVID. Yep. She is like as thick as two short planks. Dude. And I look at her and I think, how, how do you get out of bed and function in, in the morning? She is so stupid. Because there's um, no expectation. Is that what it is, do you think? Yeah, I, f I feel like, okay, think about it. You have an ambivalent population that does not care about politics. They don't even, if you ask the majority, I mean, obviously your, your people are different because they know they're invested. But if you ask the majority of Australians, like, who's the current leader? They'd be like, what? Like, mm. we, what, don't we have a president? I bet you anything. <laughs> <laughs> like so you you take the ambivalence of a population you take the fact that everybody has to vote so it's not like people even need to be interested they just have to go in and go and pretend that they actually you know did something of value that day um mm. you you factor in the i guess like the fact that australians are kind of like and i don't want this to sound mean or unkind and i don't mean it to be but they're kind of like a nine to five kind of country where people really love their free time they love chilling out they want to go and do their job and then they want to be in their own space as much as they can and so you have a yeah. population that's more concerned with their own stuff rather than like taxes and blah 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 so you factor all these things in politicians just get to do what they want because no one's paying attention anyway and so you mm. don't have to be smart you don't have to be clever you don't have to be well spoken because your population doesn't give a damn about what you're doing as it is i mean that's just my assessment of it i think I that is a no 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 i think that's a really good assessment and i, I think it's got to the point where australia even australia conservatives a lot of them are big government people because we're a, a welfare state that's just yes. the way we've yeah. always been there's no and hasn't been really since tony abbott was leader of the liberal party um, mm -hmm. There's no real huge point of difference between no. either side of politics. And that got even more conflated during COVID because people were, uh, you know, as Australians are much more concerned with safety over 
freedom, freedom. Um, which is also always a recipe for disaster. So you get these, yeah. if there's no competition and as you say, no expectation, uh, the talent pool just dries up. <laughs> and also, I mean, like, why would you want to be involved? Like, I always say, I always say, like, if I ever come back to Australia, I full blown will become the leader of a state or the country. Good. Uh, Good. I legitimately will because, like, I would do that. I for sure would do that. Or I would start like a media company or something and and do that so that Australia actually has another person who's running a media company. I don't know. Um, but I, you know, when you look at all of that, it's like if why would anybody who's self-respecting who has a business or who's you know crushing it elsewhere why the hell would they want to be a politician in australia right. like for yeah. why at least here in the us you make a crap ton because you just you get the up and up on what's going on <laughs> in the stock market and then you make a bajillion dollars exactly you just talk to, talk to nancy pelosi she'll give you some lessons on that <laughs> inside of trading what up <laughs> oh god but none of that's a thing back home well i'm sure it is a thing yeah. but none of that's like an actual you know that's not like a well-known thing where you get in bed with big pharma and all these companies and whatnot that's a thing here there's motivation to be a politician yeah oh god i'm so negative about this stuff it's kind of crazy no no no. That's i'm bad. the same my my uh feelings about government are, are, are like at the moment at best i think it's a necessary evil and at yeah. worst at worst you, you don't want to you don't want to know what I, yeah what i think it was oh this is funny i like this um mother earth is transphobic it's person of earth true thank you very much uh mojack 420 uh sydney and i acknowledge that comment we'll we'll learn from it and we will both check our our cis heterosexual privilege <laughs> um because you are right mother earth is transphobic it should be it should be person of uh, no it should be birthing person of earth true birthing true. person of earth mm -hmm. i love it very true um so i'm looking through all these chats guys you've got some really good good questions um here is a a, a philosophical point from savrix uh oh callum just messaged me and said earthing person Earthing, oh, that's other. awesome that's that's very funny baby i love that um savrix says leonardo da vinci knowledge is power he was wrong it's how we harness what we perceive as knowledge that would give said power that's a that's a very deep point what do you think of that, Sydney? I'm just absorbing that information. Mm. It's uh, it's like nine o'clock or like half past eight on a Friday for me. So I'm like, <laughs> yeah. knowledge is power. It's how we harness what we perceive as knowledge that we would give that would give said power. I mean, yeah. I mean, because mm. I, I mean, these things aren't universal. That's what's so weird about a lot of this stuff is this stuff is not universal. I have had arguments with some of my Christian friends about what universal truth is, and I'm like. I used to, I think that there are some issues where you can find universal truth, but not really today. I mean, mm. truth is subjective and that's messed up as a concept. Yeah. Mm, wrap your noggin around that one. It's sort of why we are in this strange 2022 place. Precisely. That we are. <laughs> Precisely. Now, on that note, that deeply philosophical note, Sydney, it is it is late where you now where where you are, and we've taken up far too much of your time already. No, this has been really <laughs> fun. I've really enjoyed this, and I'm very thankful to you for inviting me, and and you know your your poor audience for listening to me be a little bit psychotic for an hour and a half. No, we we love you honestly. Thank you so much, so much for joining us today. Um, you've done us all a solid. And if you would like to come back, I would love to have you back. I'm sure all my subscribers would love to have you back as well. Well, you know, I was thinking as well when I eventually visit Australia, which hope will be in the next couple months. Um, oh yay! Good. I will. I will. Oh no, you bloody live in freaking Queensland now. You oh, pain yes, in the I butthole. Do. Yeah, because well, I would have been like, can... you're in Sydney. Well, I come to Sydney quite a bit now that I'm actually allowed to travel. Oh. So let me know when you're going to be there because it yeah. might just be when I'm going to be there. And well, there you go. We can tee something fab. up in real life. We can. I haven't seen we you can. in a very long time. It's been many moons. It has been many moons. It has been many <laughs> moons. Um, well, I look forward to seeing you again. And yes. I will, I'll see you in the next one. Yes, 100%. Bye, lovely. Thank you see for you having later. me. No worries. I'll see if I can work out. Oh, yes, I, I, clicked, the, I clicked the remove button. <laughs> Okay, three, I'm going to click it. Bye, lovely. See you soon. <laughs> Bye.